Yeah, so it, you've raised quite a bit of money with both both ventures. Yeah. I mean, I probably in I mean, gosh, looking around for Richmond and Hampton Roads, I mean, you're probably one of you know certainly in the top ten. Ten percent, I would say. Yeah. Um, what do you attribute that success to yeah. in terms of how you've been able to raise money? Here we go. I'm going to give you guys my playbook. You ready for it? Yep. <laughs> the, I don't know how many step program, the something step program to raise money. So, so I, I, I had never raised money before. And of course I did and had not been part of a company that had done it, seen it. And so I had to think about, you know, I can't sell snake oil. I have to have total convictions. I have to know that I'm going to work on this through thick and thin. And, and you know, I did, and I want to be open and honest with investors. Um, and so I found the way that worked for me was to reach out to people as mentors. And I would reach out to them mostly as mentors first and say, hey, I'd love to talk to you because you did X, Y, Z, uh, maybe in analytics or marketing, or you've got a ticketing background or whatever that is, and would love to tell you what we're doing. And so I'd walk them through, basically, here's what we do. It'd be basically an investor deck without an ask slide. And I would wait for them to say something about uh, something positive. Not all of them would, but the ones that did it were like, this is the best idea ever. Where has this been? I'm so excited. Oh my God, when are you, whatever. Some of them would ask, are you raising? Uh, but many of them wouldn't. They'd just say something really positive. Like, this is incredible. This is a really great thing. And I'd say, that's great. You know, I was putting you in this mentor box. We're about to go raise another round. I should keep you in that mentor box, right? And what I would do when I would say that is, uh, you know, I, I made rejection really easy. So if they said, yeah, no, that's right. I only invest in healthcare. Or I'm not investing at this time or I'm not an accredited investor, whatever. Instead of saying no to me, they were just agreeing with me. Yeah, that, that's right. Keep me in that mentor box. If they were interested in investing, then they would actually say, no, no, no. I, I don't think of me just as a mentor. I'm interested. And then I'd say, oh, what makes you interested? And now it just flips the whole dynamic. Rather than me asking them for money, now they're telling me, what makes them interested in our company and why they would be a good investor. Um, and I just found that to be such a relief because you're going to get so many rejections and I needed to find a way to make it really organic and sustainable as I went through those rounds. You're going to get a lot of rejections because the way that most people ask is just like, Hey, I just met you now give me money. That's true. And also I recognize a lot of the people who typically get asked are oversaturated yeah. um, because they're the people you go to. So the, uh, by me really working the network to find mentors, I think I was able to find more people who were really uh, uh, great professional success stories uh, that might be looking for things, but just the community didn't know that they were available for investment. Well, and so, if they're so going to be a mentor, then that means they actually are going to be something more than just a check, which is... Uh, oftentimes something that's incredible. I, I think that's important. absolutely true too. So because of this, I really, the people who have invested uh, for the most part have professional experience that's directly relevant because that's how we got connected. Yeah. So that's, that's how I did it. I, I hadn't, nobody had advised me to do it that way. It just kind of, that's kind of how I found my way home, so to speak. Um, uh, and I also found out I loved pitching. So signed up for pitch competitions, won, won a bunch of those, uh, and I was worried because of the pandemic, just to kind of bring it all together here, that all of that momentum might be lost. And when we started getting reach outs in the last few months from companies saying, hey, we talked back in 2019, uh, or I remembered you guys as an events aggregator, let's talk. Uh, that was another one of those personal satisfaction moments where I was like, okay, all that time and effort spent getting building a brand and getting the word out. Um, it wasn't to waste and it's still in place that it's, it's a foundation that we can build on. Was, was pitching something you always loved or did you have to learn how to do it? Not only did I have to learn how to do that, but I hated sales. I was scared of doing sales. I thought that sales was sleazy and oily and scary. And um, I just avoided it uh, for the first several months. Um, so when I said that I created a website and reached out to these businesses to get information, uh, what I had done previously was actually I hired somebody to go out and sell for us. Um, and when they didn't perform great, I sort of think, all right, well, I don't know if it's their fault or if it's the idea's fault. I got to just figure this out on my own and get the feedback more directly. And I realized through those first few conversations that selling is actually just having a conversation. If you've got something that they want, uh, if you've got a great product market fit, if the problem that you're solving is important enough, 
then all you're doing is just sharing what you built and the love, you know, that you have for it and, and your plans and where it's going to go. And I found that the conversational approach w- was so organic and, and I loved doing that, that now I love sales. I love the opportunity to hop on with the client and say, hey, what are your problems? Here's what we've got. Is there a fit? And letting them kind of drive the next steps. Um, and, and that's been, I, I've found that sales is not only sustainable, but fun uh, when it's about connecting. Someone who's been directly involved within the startup community for almost a decade, I want to talk to you about a serious pain point spending a ton of time trying to understand the business landscape in the 757. That's time that should be focused on growing the business. At Startwheel, we're here to help you by compiling all of the news you need to know about in one place. Now there's no need to search multiple websites. Just head to startwheel.org and see for yourself. That's startwheel.org.